The limiting reactant. The coefficients of equations are sometimes called stoichiometric coefficients. So these numbers that we're looking at in front of each one of these compounds. Um, we, we looked at them and way back when we first learned uh, about chemical reactions, we knew, well, okay, it meant that we had two of these, one of these, maybe five of those, okay? But we realized that there's a relationship that we can kind of use in terms of a mole ratio. So how many moles of this to how many moles of that to produce X number of moles uh, of a product. So reactants are said to be present in stoichiometric amounts when they are present in a mole ratio that corresponds exactly to the more mole ratio predicted by the balanced chemical equation. This means that when the reaction is complete, there are no reactants left. So what we have is we're using up both, let's say, the uh, nitrogen gas and the hydrogen gas. We're using it up completely, meaning that there's nothing left over and everything has been put together. But ideally, that would be great to happen, but Realistically, that's not what happens, okay? So, reactions almost never have reactants in stoichiometric amounts. So as, we, uh, as I was mentioning before, uh, for in terms of cellular respiration, so you have glucose, okay, so one molecule of glucose, okay, one, you know, um, to uh, combine with six molecules of oxygen to produce six molecules of carbon dioxide to six molecules of water, which means now, Okay, if we look back at the, uh, the mole ratio, well, we have one mole okay, to six moles okay, to six moles okay, to six moles. Okay, so we can treat it that way as well. Okay, but ideally, but realistically, right, this amount is constantly present. Okay. So as we said, limitless supply of oxygen present, but the amount of glucose is limited to the amount the animal has eaten. So it depends yourself. When you're breaking down the glucose in your body, okay, this reaction is limited to how much glucose you have in your body. Determining the limiting reactant. The reactant that is completely used up in a chemical reaction is called the limiting reactant. When the limiting reactant is used up, the reaction stops, okay. Uh, okay, just like what we talked about with the glucose. Once the glucose is done, regardless, you know, you're gonna still have that input of oxygen there, but if there's no glucose there, how can that reaction continue any further? Okay, so uh, a reactant that remains after a reaction is over is called the excess reactant. Okay. So whatever is left over, whatever didn't get a chance to get broken down, is considered in excess, right? We have more of it. When you're given amounts of two or more reactants to solve a stoichiometric problem, you first need to identify the limiting reactant. Okay, find out how much um, product would be produced by each reactant if the other reactant were present in excess. The reactant that produces the least amount of product is the limiting reactant, as we've talked about uh, just a second ago. Okay, so we're going to look at similar, you know, our stoichiometric problems that we've, we've looked at last class. Okay, but, for, but now we're going to actually try to figure out which one is going to run out first and which one's going to be left, left, still left over, okay, with this reaction. So.